Hey everybody, it's Brother Packer here at the Institute. We're grateful that we have now our episode three of Connections to Christ. It's been a great week and we're grateful for all of you and we're excited to share some things with you this week. So we've got uh, Sister Corden's gonna share a little story with you about uh, finding light. We've got a few students that uh, are going to share their testimony about how Institute's blessing their lives. We hope everything's well for you. We want you to feel welcome. We want you to come over. Please continue to share these video clips with friends and others that will hopefully bless their lives as we try to do our best to help you connect to Christ. When I was 10 years old, our family had the honor of hosting Elder L. Tom Perry of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles while he was on assignment in my hometown. At the close of the day, our family and the Perrys sat down in our living room to enjoy my mother's delicious apple pie while Elder Perry recounted stories about the saints around the world. I was enthralled. It was getting late when my mother called me into the kitchen and asked a simple question. Bonnie, did you feed the chickens? My heart fell. I had not. Not wanting to leave the presence of an apostle of the Lord, I suggested that the chickens could fast until morning. My mother replied with a definitive no. Just then, Elder Perry entered the kitchen and with his booming, enthusiastic voice asked, Did I hear someone needs to feed the chickens? Can my son and I join you? Oh, what an absolute joy it now became to feed the chickens. I ran to get the large yellow flashlight. Excited, I led out, skipping over the well-worn path to the chicken coop. With the flashlight swinging from my hand, we crossed the corn patch and passed through the wheat field. Reaching the small irrigation ditch that crossed the path, I instinctively jumped over it, as I had done many nights before. I was oblivious to Elder Perry's efforts to keep up on a dark, unknown path. My dancing light did not help him see the ditch. Without the steady light to see, he stepped directly into the water and let out a loud groan. Panicked, I turned to see my new friend remove his soaking wet foot from the ditch and shaking the water from his heavy leather shoe. With a soaked and sloshing shoe, Elder Perry helped me feed the chickens. When we were through, he lovingly instructed, Bonnie, I need to see the path. I need the light to shine where I am walking. I was shining my light, but not in a way that would help Elder Perry. Now, knowing that he needed my light to safely navigate the path, I focused the flashlight just ahead of his steps, and we were able to return home with confidence. My dear brothers and sisters, for years, I have pondered the principle I had learned from Elder Perry. The Lord's invitation to let our light so shine is not just about randomly waving a beam of light and making the world generally brighter. It is about focusing our light so others may see the way to Christ. It is gathering Israel on this side of the veil, helping others see the next step forward in making and keeping sacred covenants with God. Hi, my name is Jason. Um, I'm a sophomore here at ISU. I'm a health science major. Uh, I'm from Blackfoot, Idaho. Um, and one way the Institute helps me to shine my light um, is it provides me the opportunity throughout the week to bear my testimony um, with my fellow brothers and sisters. Um, I think it's really helped me to direct my light in a way to help other people. Uh, whereas without Institute, um, it's almost easy to become one of those members of the church that only practices the religion on Sunday. Uh, whereas Institute gives you the opportunity throughout the week to, uh, to really ponder about what you learn uh, as you read the scriptures and um, as you try and live the gospel. Um, and for me, Institute allows, allows me to help others by directing that light in a way to help others know that they're not alone in their problems or in their struggles, but that everyone deals with them. Um, and it really helps me to picture how the Savior helps each and every one of us. So my name is Rebecca Rasmussen. I'm from McCammon, and uh, I'm here studying English education. 
Um, one of the ways that I find the light of Christ is by taking Institute. And um, I find that it's a really good reminder of things that I already know, but it is also a way that I personally receive revelation. And it's, it's not like huge spiritual revelation, but it's small things. Things that, you know, maybe this is something I can work on. This is something that can bring me closer to Christ. But then through other students, I also learn that, you know, Christ's love is personal for all of us. And that by listening to them, I learn more about his love for me. And so to me, Institute is just a good, it's a good reprieve. It's a good sanctuary from the world where you can just come and you can remember and be reminded of who you really are and how much God and Jesus Christ love us all. Hi, my name is Avery Laboo. I am a freshman here at ISU and I am from Eagle, Idaho. Um, the way that I have seen Christ's light through Institute is primarily through other people. Uh, through my classmates and my teachers, their influence on me has um, just helped me to have a more optimistic mindset, um, going through the, the, these crazy times in life. And um, it's also just given me an opportunity to have a safe place to feel the spirit um, and just feel that peace and comfort that comes with that. By virtue of the restoration of his gospel, we can be filled with the light of the Savior. However, that light is not meant for you and me alone. Jesus Christ has called upon us to let your light so shine before this people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I have come to love the phrase that they may see. It is an earnest invitation from the Lord to be more intentional about helping others see the path and thereby come unto Christ.